Welcome back to College Conversations. I'm Dr. Fedor and I help you navigate college. Please remember to hit subscribe and share this video with others who might also find this useful. Today, I have with me Adam Stemple, award-winning author and musician. Adam has written a series of books on writing fantasy. He writes and speaks often on the craft of creative, creative writing, and he's my go-to person for questions about how students can get started with creative writing. Hi, Adam. Hello, Janice. How are you? I'm great. Great. Thanks for joining me. So I want to start with how did you personally get started with creative writing? Writing's kind of the family business, and I grew up, uh, my mother's a writer, and just grew up around uh, around writing. I, I like to tell people I had kind of a Skinner-esque training in writing, and that a lot of kids keep journals, but my journals came, my nine-year-old journals came back with, uh, uh, corrected in red pen, with a prompt for the next day's writing. <laughs> I don't, I don't recommend that for, uh, for children, but, you know, it worked for me. Right, right. Oh, that's, that's so funny. Um, so where do you, as a writer, where do you find your inspiration for ideas and, you know, plots and characters and so forth? The thing that most writers will tell you is that the idea is actually the easy part. Uh, there's ideas all around you every day, people you know, things you see, stories you hear, uh, ideas from history and science and and art. But, you know, the hard part is actually writing them down. Uh, most writers have more ideas in a day than they can uh, write up in their lifetime. So the hard part is learning how to write them down and make them uh, make them actually into a story instead of just an idea. So is it fair to say that your favorite process is the coming up with ideas part? Or what is your favorite part of the process? The, it's, it's easier for me to outline my least favorite part of the process because okay. I enjoy almost everything about writing. Uh, thinking about the ideas, doing the world building, uh, plotting, uh, character work, uh, talking about writing, thinking about writing, critiquing other people's stuff, getting my stuff critiqued. I, 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 uh, the actual writing itself, whether it's, you know, a hundred words or a thousand words, whether it's a poem, short story, novel, any, anything, I do all of those. The, the only part I don't like about writing, and it's, it's largely because of the fear of transitions, is I don't like sitting down to write. That's the hard part. Going from one state to another, the state of not writing to writing, that little transitional space is very difficult to navigate. That's that's very interesting. Do you have a goal like, okay, I'm going to write 100 words a day or a thousand words a day or, or something? Do you have a goal like that? I do. It, it changes, but uh, it used to be a thousand words a day. Generally, these days, I'm aiming for between 2,000 to 4,000 words a day. If I can sit down to write, and if I turn on some music with no lyrics, put my headphones on and sit down and write, I will write a thousand words if I'm working on something long form. I don't have to worry about that. So if I could do that twice during a day, then I've got my 2000 words. But there's also, there's a lot of other stuff involved with writing. There's a lot of connections to maintain between, you know, editors and co-writers. Marketing, I do some, I do some traditional publishing. I do some self-publishing and in both of them the marketing of the stuff is largely just up to me so there's a lot of that so there's attention to various social media feeds uh cover design all this there's a lot of uh, uh, tracking submissions of stuff i've generally got between 10 to 30 things out on submission and i have to keep track of those when, uh, you know when it comes in and stuff so there's a lot of peripheral stuff that that has to happen besides the writing so if i only write 500 words but i dealt with a lot of that peripheral stuff as well, well, then it's still a, a good day of work. Can you explain world building and secondary worlds? World building is, is really just the act of, of getting all the rules in place for whatever world your, your characters are moving through. I, I write mostly fantasy and a lot of secondary world fantasy, which means a world that is not our own. But even if you're writing literary uh, stuff, which takes place in our world, there's still some world building because your characters won't be real. Uh, and so you need to make, you need to create their lives and what, uh, what their history is. And all of that goes into, it's good to know all of that. You don't need to know that to start writing. Uh, but once you're rewriting, you should know as much as possible. You don't have to show it on the page, but the more you as the author know, 
about your characters and the world they move through, the more logical your characters are. And, and if your characters follow an interior, a, a, a logical uh, internal logic, then they make decisions that make sense and the reader is not thrown out of the, uh, the book. Right. No, and that does sound like that would take a tremendous amount of time. Do you have a favorite piece of work or something that you just absolutely love that you can tell me, Janice, this was my favorite thing that I worked on. Or I'm most <laughs> proud of. Oh, there's, there's, there's so many. The, the, the standard answer, which is standard because it's true, is that my favorite piece of work is the one I'm working on right now. I mean, that's what you're excited about right. and that's where you're going. But when people ask me this question, my favorite right now is a, is a story that uh, came out in Clark's World which is a science fiction and fantasy magazine. And it's a story called The Clock Having Turned Its Face to the Mirror Still Knows Not the Time. I really love it because, uh, because it's a little different from a lot of the stuff I write. I write a lot of very active fantasy with, the, you know, with a lot of plotting and a lot of action and fighting, and, and which I truly enjoy. But this story is a very quiet story. My, my, uh, my critique group said, you know, Adam, this, has a, uh, this story has a lot of quiet sadness to it. And usually... When your characters are sad, it's because someone has taken an axe to their family member or something. Right. It's a, you know, right. it's a much more active sadness. And this has a, so it's just it's kind of a different piece for me. And and in that way, it kind of holds holds a special special spot for me. Adam, I see a couple of guitars in the background there. Yes. Is there a synergy between your career as a musician and writing? What, what kind of synergy is there between the music and the writing? Very much so. Uh, I was a, was a professional musician since about the age of 18 and a professional writer, you know, not so long after that. But for me, there's a synergy uh, and a correlation between all the art forms. When I was going to uh, school for graphic design, um, there was a, a, a drawing teacher who told me, uh, well, he told the whole class, in all great art, you will see three things at a high level. It's uh, composition, con concept, and technique. And that really struck me because he was talking about, uh, you know, about visual art and in all great visual art. But it really, it, it crosses that line and goes over into every art form, you know, dance, music, uh, visual art, movies, uh, uh, writing, concept, composition, and technique. And the fun thing is that once you work, you, when you get to a, a real uh, professional level in any art form, you will have gotten very good at concept and composition. And when you switch to another one, really, it's only the technique that takes the most amount of work. And of all the things, especially for college students, technique is the most teachable. It's not necessarily the easiest to learn, but it's the most teachable. There can be a real plan a step-by-step -step process to learning technique where you know how to hold a brush how what the notes are on a guitar where to put your feet if it's dance adam what advice can you give the students who are watching this about creative writing and and what what they should do to get started just write you don't learn how to write you learn how you write i've read upwards of 30 or 40 how to write books. And I've, I've written three myself, how to write fantasy novels. The best of them simply tell you how that author writes, the tricks of the trade for them that work for them. And if they're really good, they tell you why they are doing that, what they're trying to accomplish. So you're, you're here, you want to get here. The author says, here's what I did right. and here's why. And the important thing for the student is to look at that and go, okay, I too want to get here because of this, but I don't think this will work. What's an alternate path to, to achieve the same goal? Because every writer is different and every, every process is different. I know very successful writers who write, you know, 200 words a day longhand. I know writers who, who like, if they write less than 10,000 words in a day, they're, they're lost. There are writers who plot, there's writers who don't plot. Outline, don't outline. Use stories, this story structure, this story structure, no story structure, all of it. And all of them are very successful and all of them write very uh, interesting things. So do you have like a giant whiteboard that you plot your ideas on or do you keep I, that all in your head? I, I have a giant whiteboard 
uh, which currently the, the whiteboard really is for plotting, uh, plotting out my life. Sure. Oh, okay. uh, and my work life. My method is fairly haphazard on it. It's really just taking notes in Word and then kind of trying to keep them together in one place. And I and I experiment every two, three years or so with some kind of with, you know, plotter. Is this plotting thing or an outlining program or Scrivener? My, my kid uses Scrivener. My kid has a uh, creative writing degree. Not surprising. Backwards. And they, yeah, exactly. And they use Scrivener. They love Scrivener. And a lot of people use Scrivener, but I've been doing my, my own system for 30 years. So do I really want to spend, you know, right. six months getting good at a system that is really just replicating what I'm already doing? Right. But I, I've seen those kind of tools work, work wonders for other people. And again, it's how you write, not how to write. So that's great advice for the students. Adam, thank you again for joining me on College Conversations. Please remember to hit subscribe and share this video with others who might also find this useful and remember to keep learning.